To God be the glory and praise, I would like to share to each and every one the dream that I had January 13. This is actually a long dream, but it's divided into five scenarios, but I'm going to share the last part, the fifth part. In this dream, uh, it has something to do with fish. I actually went into the market and uh, I'm going to buy a fish. And because I loved fish so much, so I went in there, right? So I was looking for the fish that I want to buy until I finally stood in front of this lady who was selling the fish. And I pointed the fish that I wanted to buy and she actually divided it into three parts. And so as she divided it, I actually noticed that there's like a lump at the tail of the fish. So I actually pointed it to her and she said, open it. So I opened the tail part of the fish and as I opened it, I noticed that there's a pearl inside the skin, inside the meat of the fish. And so I was telling everybody that there's a pearl. So everybody in the market was looking and um, the moment that I showed it was a pearl, the lady who was selling the fish to me, the, the vendor, she wants to take the, the pearl away from me. But all the people who were there surrounding, even those people who are selling the fish and people who are buying, all the people that are there except for the lady, they told me, no, don't give it to her because that's yours. And what they did, they surrounded me to protect me so the, the lady can take it away from me. And they were telling me, that's yours, take it and go. So I took the pearl that I got from that fish and I go away, praise be to God. And so it was like amazing uh, kind of dream and it has something to do with the connect, it has a connection with the other dream that I had. But anyway, why am I seeing? A pearl. Why was I given a pearl in this dream? Brothers and sisters, when you talk about the words of the Lord in the Bible, the Lord God speak about the pearl several times. Look at heaven, the new Jerusalem. It is actually, uh, you can go into the new Jerusalem into 12 gates, which is made of pearl, right? But look at this, brothers and sisters. The Lord spoke about the parable of the hidden treasures and the pearl. The Lord spoke in uh, Matthew. I forgot what number in Matthew here. Um, Matthew, verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Failed. Praise be to God. I'm claiming that Lord Jesus. I want to have that field and I want to have that pearl. Praise be to God. Again, the Lord said, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Brothers and sisters, the Lord is actually giving that parable that that pearl is so precious that when it also represents Jesus Christ that when we found him look at the the fish that I was seeing in the dream it's divided into three is it representing that I bought the fish or I found that fish which is composed of the three holy trinity God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit and when I found God through Jesus Christ and I was given the Holy Spirit that helps me walk righteously with the Lord and bear much fruit, the Lord will give us the, the jewels that we're supposed to receive. And praise be to God, I give him the glory for giving me the pearl. And so the Lord represent, tells us that it's like the kingdom of God. That when we found God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, who is so precious, we are willing to give up everything and sell our house and our possession, 
just to have God the Father, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So we will be with Him in heaven. A lot of people are like seeking for all the joy. The joy, the whatever. Everybody's like craving for something that will satisfy them. And that's why a lot of people, you know, when they want to buy a house, they get it because they thought they will be happy. Once they have that mansion house, they started to look for another one. And other people have several mansion houses, several expensive cars, but they're still not satisfied. Why? Because it's not the Lord. Only God the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit will give us the total peace, the total joy, the, do the total love, and the total satisfaction. Because they are the love that we are looking for, we're seeking for. They're the treasures that we're supposed to invest. Not the treasures here on earth, but the treasures in heaven. So will this be possible, brothers and sisters, that we can find a pearl in a fish? I will tell you if I found it already, and I'm sure I already did. But will that be possible? Remember the story that Jesus said in Matthew 17 verse 27. But so that we may not offend them, go to the sea, Jesus said. Cast a hook and take the first fish you catch. When you open its mouth, you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for you and me. Look at that, brothers and sisters. When the apostle was asking Jesus if they are supposed to be paying for taxes, what did Jesus do? He commanded the apostle to throw the hook into the sea and catch a fish. And the fish have coins in the mouth. Had coins in the mouth. Will that be possible? Yes, because the Lord said it in the Bible. So if it's possible, is it also possible that the pearl could come out from the fish? Yes, because the pearl is actually in the ocean. And so, whatever the literal is, it's the literal way of coming out of pearl from the fish. We're also talking about the spiritual kingdom of God. That once you found it, once you found God through Jesus Christ, and you are given the Holy Spirit, the Lord will bless us and give us that kingdom that he promised us praise be to god in matthew 6 verse 33 to 34 the lord said but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well see the lord wants us to follow to seek him to seek and follow the lord and once we continually seek him seeking for the truth the light, the words of the Lord, everything. Oh, you know, when you seek His kingdom and His righteousness, all the things that we need will be given to us. I know, you know, all of us are actually thinking about the worries we have from our finances, from everything. You know, everything will be shaken. And I was shaken again. Because I was even thinking we might end up sleeping, you know. My, I, my husband was even joking. We might end up sleeping in a car. Because the enemy is trying to fight with you. Trying to destroy the children of God. But will the Lord allow it to happen? No. The Lord said when you seek Him and His righteousness, everything will be added unto you. He will provide everything that we need. That's why we're not supposed to worry. We have to have trust in Him. Because He will not abandon us. He will not forsake us. God loves us so much. So Jesus always speak about the kingdom of God in heaven. In Luke 17 verse 20 to 21, Jesus replied, the kingdom of God does not come with your careful observation, nor will people say, 
here it is, here it is, or there it is. Because the kingdom of God is within you, within us. The kingdom of God is within us. That's what the Lord said in Luke. And so therefore, if we continually seek the Lord with all our body, mind, heart, and soul, we will find His kingdom. And that treasure of the kingdom of God will be given to us. Praise be to God. And the Lord said also in John 3 verse 3 to 7, in reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. It is an important step, brothers and sisters, that we will be born again. Why? Because Jesus said, God the Father, God the Son, and since Jesus is in heaven right now, He's going to give us the Advocate who is the Holy Spirit. And we will only receive the Holy Spirit if we are born again. And so if you only believe in the Lord and Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, be born again. Confess. And other people might say, no, you don't need to. You just, yeah, you will be safe if you accept Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But Jesus said, be born again. Why? Because the Lord said, even Jesus Christ, he even asked John, told John to baptize him. And John was even said, I'm not worth to untie your sandals. But Jesus said, it needs to happen. Because it is written and it needs to come into pass. And so the Lord said, be born again. And that's what he also said. I tell you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. So be born again, brothers and sisters. Accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. Ask him to come into your heart. Repent from your sins and declare in your mouth that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that he bought you for a price and that you accept him as your Lord and your Savior and you will be saved. Praise be to God. And so in Mark 4 verse 30 to 32, the Lord also said, again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, which with such big branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. See, the Lord said earlier, that the kingdom of God is within us, okay? We will not see the kingdom of God. We don't see it by our eyes because it's within us. And in order for us to have the kingdom of God is for us to be born again. And the Lord compared that kingdom of God into a mustard seed. A mustard seed that will grow from a small seed into a big tree. Brothers and sisters, look at this again. The Lord mentioned in the Bible, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountain, right? So it's our faith and at the same time, the faith and the Holy Spirit in us, right? With the Holy Spirit in us, that faith, that mustard seed will actually grow big with the help of the words of God that is actually being absorbed by your body through reading of the words of God, through listening to the words of God, through saying the words of God, and living the words of God. You have to live by it. Now, if we continually feed ourselves with the words of God, I'll say it again. If we continually Feed ourselves with the words of God. Remember again, brothers and sisters, the Lord said, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
So if we eat the food that we eat, we need to eat also the words of God. Because that's the words or the food of our spirit. And who is that food of the spirit? It's Jesus Christ. Because the Lord said in John 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If we continually feed ourselves with the words of God, that seed in us will continually grow because the words of God is the living water. It will continually grow and bear much branches and bear much fruits with the help of the Holy Spirit. He will guide us and help us to bear much fruits for the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord wants us to be an obedient worker, to be an obedient servant, and at the same time, an obedient bride and obedient friend. We have to continually live with the words of God, continually seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and not to be worrying about what's going on with the world, because the Lord is in control. He will provide what we need. He will set us on the place that we need to go. He will give us the field that we need to step in. We need to live on. He will provide us with the food, the shelter, everything, the things that we need. Don't worry about those. He will provide. All we have to continually do is to be the workers to do what we should be doing for the kingdom of God. Brothers and sisters, the Lord loves us so much and He wants us to remember He is giving us the jewels, the jewels that we deserve to have and those jewels will be on our crown. And aside from that, He will give us the pearl that we are seeking for, the kingdom of God, the very treasures that every man in the world is seeking for. Others who are lost in the darkness and were blinded, they don't know the real treasures. They are actually so narrow that they see the treasures of the earth and the world. We should see the kingdom of God and that's the treasures in heaven. And once we found it, through God the Father, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the Lord will give us the kingdom of God, the treasures that we deserve. Brothers and sisters, I hope, uh, I hope this is an inspiration to each and every one, but I'm so excited looking at it and uh, hearing it, and I'm claiming the promise and the words of the Lord, and I know the words of the Lord is not going to come back void, but the Lord is faithful to His words. So brothers and sisters, God bless each and every one. In Jesus Yeshua's name, amen and amen.